Hello, my name is Tatiana Lebedeva and I was born and bred in St. Petersburg and this is why I'm going to share with you my tips about St. Petersburg and how to travel right in this beautiful and stunning Russian city. So let's go! <laughs> the tip number one is your clothes because St. Petersburg is located near the Gulf. Well, not near, actually on the Gulf, in the in the entrance of the Gulf or the start of the Gulf, Baltic Gulf. So, please, take an umbrella with you and take some comfortable shoes because it's if you're going to walk a lot and you are going to walk a lot, you need to have comfortable shoes, umbrella and be prepared that sometimes it gets really windy over there. So, yeah, my tip number one, your clothes. <laughs> Then my second tip is the season. So in St. Petersburg we all know about the season, the summer season. Because in June we have these white nights that are so popular. The accommodation, hotels and or maybe Airbnb or booking, everything goes up in price in average at least 30%. So if you want to go to St. Petersburg and you want to save a little bit of money, there is nothing bad and even more interesting to go during the winter. Because during the winter you can see the snow. And I know that for some countries, for example like in UK, <laughs> the snow <laughs> is very unusual. So if you want to see this part of my this part of St. Petersburg, you're welcome because you have snow and these beautiful palaces and museums and theatres and it's so nice to drink some mulled wine sitting somewhere on Nevsky Prospect and just look in the window and see the snow falling. It's, it's beautiful. Well, it's beautiful during the summer as well. <laughs> but if you want to save a little bit of money, winter is just best, the, the best option because it's beautiful and less tourists, definitely. The third, my third tip is to cycle. But if you cycle, it's good news or maybe bad news, but there are not many cyclist lines on the roads. So, but if you want to cycle on the pavement, there is no law that's saying you can't do that. And I think people understand that. Just don't go too fast. But it's really useful because you can rent a bicycle maybe for a 10 10 or 15 pounds, well, which is equivalent to 1,000 or 1,500 Russian rubles. By the way, it's really good. The, at the moment, the currency is really good. So, for example, if you have 10 pounds, you have 1,000 rubles in Russia, which is good exchange rate. My tip number four is try, try river cruises. There are so many and they're so great. I mean, they are, they're running in daytime or nighttime. So if you want this experience, it's just brilliant. It costs nothing, like up to 10 pounds, but the experience is great because St. Petersburg was built on the rivers and in the start, when the city was just built, people used the river to travel in the city instead of, instead of the pavement instead of caps, well, not caps, but, you know, horses. <laughs> so, yes, so St. Petersburg is called a northern Venice because it was supposed to be, it, it was the, the, the Tsar, Peter I, his idea was to, build, was to build the city where people travel, or where people travel on canals, like in Venice. So it's really, you know, it's very unusual experience to any other Europe cities, except for Venice, of course. <laughs> okay, so my tip number five, and I mentioned in tip number two, tip number five is white nights. And during white nights, it's a period maybe between 20th of May to 21st of June. And why it's called white nights? Because during the night, you don't have much, it doesn't get darker. So it's kind of light all night long and it's very unusual experience. You can go to a nightclub and then after nightclub about 4 or 5 a.m. you're walking out and it's light and it's just great. You can, <laughs> you can go home and it's light all day long. 
I really I love this spirit and also 27th of May is a St. Petersburg day and usually it's some fireworks or some decoration and everyone is very cheerful and friendly and drinking and then on in the end of June I don't remember date I think they change it every year but there is um, student celebration so all people who finish their school they have this special celebration this special day which is called uh, red sales sorry red sales and it's it's a celebration where all students they 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 sail it's a metaphor they sail to adult life and it's it's a great celebration it's one of the best celebrations in Europe I think one one year it was called as the best celebration in Europe because it was that big and usually it is fireworks it is a concert with live music there are loads of young people drunk it just you know <laughs> It's famous for that because everyone is drinking all night and my tip number six is check when the museums are free because on some days in St. Petersburg museums are free to visit if you want to save a little bit of money it might be useful information my tip number seven is St. Petersburg is famous for gastro experience so if you are a food lover you would enjoy to visit St. Petersburg there are so many restaurants and bars and places to go and eat nice foods and where you which you can't find anywhere else there are so many artisan foods I'm so proud that St. Petersburg is called like this because yeah because I love food <laughs> can't wait to go and try something new it might be a bit pricey compared to of course to usual places like Burger King or McDonald's you still can find it there but it's worth to try some you know some artisan pancakes or some artisan traditional Russian food I mean I'm not talking about like restaurants for that that's a very famous in outside Russia like traditional restaurants no I'm talking about new places new places with style with new chefs that are you know very brave to try new things <laughs> also my tip number eight and pay attention to that Russia uh, St. Petersburg is a capital for LGBT people and gay people and it's very informal it's I think it's the most tolerant place in the whole Russia because St. Petersburg is famous for being informal for example Moscow is very formal it's like a business city all people go in there so I mean not going there but all people go from other parts of Russia there to earn money but St. Petersburg is a cultural capital and it's really great to visit some you know some unusual singers or maybe see some performances some art you will be really impressed <laughs> what people in St. Petersburg do what kind of parties they have and things like this because I think there are some stereotypes about Russia and if you want to crush these stereotypes go to St. Petersburg and have this experience you will be amazed <laughs> So proud such a proud citizen I am St. Petersburg come on and my tip number nine that you might like if you are a football lover in St. Petersburg the main club is Zenit and there are many places where you can watch football many pubs and my tip number nine if you like football there are so many pubs restaurants cafes bars where you can watch football because Russian people they absolutely they love football they love English football they like Spain football they hate Russian football because they think that Russian football is not good but don't say that to them because I would say it's kind of mentality for Russian people like they can hate and they can they can shame themselves Russian people shame Russian football player players but if someone shame from outside they would say oh you want a problem <laughs> <laughs> it's 
So don't do this. Shame. Sh don't shame Russian football teams. Don't do that. Never as a foreigner. Because Russian people are very proud people, I think. So in St. Petersburg, the main the main club is Zenit. And well, I personally like Zenit because I went to see Zenit some well sometimes, not like many times. And also Russian people like hockey. They're famous for being a, for having a great hockey team, ice hockey of course. And there are two major major arenas, excuse me, let me remember the word, there are two major stadiums, sorry, there are two major stadiums, one stadium is the Petrovsky Stadium and there is a new stadium that was built especially for Zenit for a World Cup that was a few years ago, so if you want to see how Zenit play against other teams, the tickets again, they are not very pricey and it's a great atmosphere to watch Zenit, especially if they play against Spartak or you know, any Moscow team, it's like a fight. You need to know that between St. Petersburg and Moscow, there is always a fight. People always fighting which city is the best. Like Moscow people think Moscow is the best. St. Petersburg people think St. Petersburg is the best. And they're like, all the time. Gosh, <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> um, yeah, so Zenit. And if you want to watch ice hockey, there is ice hockey stadium. Uh, in suburbs, it's called, uh, I don't remember what is the name, but it's near Bolshevikov. I've been there. This is just unbelievable experience it was for me. Because I've never been in a place where they had like live music and, I don't know, a light show. And then for some minutes they play, for some minutes they play ice hockey. And then if someone scores, they have again this party. And for me, all this experience, I felt like I was at the party. But, well, I think it's the same in England that you can't drink at the stadium, you can't drink there. I mean, when while you're watching it, I think you can, you need to go out and then come back. So, yeah, pay attention to that. And don't mess with Russian football fans. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> Russian people don't like problems, don't worry. Yeah. I mean Russian people they're scared of police, so don't be don't be too naive and don't be too confident. I would say that. And my tip number ten, what is and this is the last tip, is that as I mentioned, Russia or Saint Petersburg is a cultural capital of Russia and there are so many theatres and of course you can go to the main theatre which is Mariinsky Theatre where you can find a lot of classical production. At the same time there are enough theatres where you can go and watch something new. I'm not sure about subtitles, if there are any subtitles, but I hope they put some subtitles for foreign people. I'm sure they do. What you definitely need to understand when you go to the theatre, it's a little bit different from England because as I notice here people don't pay that much appreciation to theatre when they go to the theatre they wear jeans and um, and they wear sneakers so please don't do this people are not allowed to eat when they watch live performance they are not allowed to drink when they watch performance usually it's a it's an evening out so people tend to wear nice smart clothes and they're they're not coughing they're not drinking i mean during the during the performance but between the performance in the break time you go out and you have a glass of very expensive prosecco, a very expensive sandwich with red caviar or salmon and this is how it is made in Russia, <laughs> in St. Petersburg. Very, yes, it's very traditional how we do, how we go to the theatre. So if you have any questions, please type in your comments. I will be very happy to answer them about my city where I was born and bred and which I love. So please don't hesitate, just write questions and if you like my video you can put likes and if you like this type of video subscribe on my channel. Every Wednesday 
I will post a new video about my city, St. Petersburg. And see you soon. Bye-bye.